Okay. So lately, I've been talking about you know what's going on in the upper atmosphere, and a while I've been forecasting a brutal winter coming up. Now, a lot of people on TV and whatnot have been forecasting a very warm and snowless winter based off of our El Nino being at a super level. Well, a lot of things have been changing in the upper atmosphere, and that super El Nino is falling apart rapidly. So we're going to kind of get in a little bit of the details that I've been talking about right over here. So basically, this is a little screenshot that I had over here, and I, I retweeted it, but I'm going to try and explain this to the best of my ability. This is basically an SOI chart over here. Your El Nino is over here, and you have a... Southern Oscillation Index that has to deal with the ENSO regions, oh, which is along the equatorial area. And this cool anomaly is basically going to rip apart the El Nino. This is the more of the more complex charts. So we're going to hit this little arrow button over here. Do not freak out, okay? I know what you're seeing is one to two feet of snow across New Jersey on December 22nd. The overall picture, all of this snow over here was up in the Michigan area. But because our stratospheric warming is starting to work into the upper levels at the peak and are now shifting up toward the polar vortex, which I'll eventually get to that, the models are starting to pick up on this and they're starting to flip. Do I think that this snowstorm is going to happen? Most likely no. But the overall picture is that the possibilities are increasing of this happening. And this is basically with your millibar charts. It would be a fairly windy snowstorm, and we also actually have two low to low pressure systems over here. This is called a double barrel low, and this creates a Fujiwara effect where the storms kind of can dance around each other. What but is Fujiwara? Yeah, what's that? Fujiwara basically is kind of like a circle, dancing around each other, the Fujiwara dance. So you can see that models went from flooding us with all this warmth and this rain and putting the snow over here, and now it's shifting the snowstorm over here. Like I said though, most likely won't happen. The overall picture is my winter forecast and other people that have the same idea as mine. My colleagues and 12 of us were on the phone outside, lying my mouth off earlier, we're happy about this. So, you can see, you know, it's still there because the other low pressure system kind of blocked it from going out as fast as you wanted it to. Now, this is up at our 70 millibars. This is our lower stratosphere over here, okay? This is hard to read because I took a screenshot talking to people, so I'll explain it to you. This is negative 48.3 degrees Celsius, okay? As you go higher up in the stratosphere, it gets colder. Not exactly. This is very difficult to see, but this is actually negative 38.6 degrees Celsius. That means that the warming in the lower levels in the troposphere working through that area work up to the top. All of this warming, and I also found another anomaly picked up around Saudi Arabia, is going to punch up to the North Pole. And this is very important because if you want your, you know, your cold winter and your snowstorms, you want this place to be hard to bear in your polar vortex up here. So you're going to see this wave kind of form right over here, and an anomaly that's kind of warmer right over here, where you kind of have like these, like uh, let's say, like a magenta-ish purple right here and right here, and another one trying to form right over here. This is 240 hours from now from the GFS model. And you know, the GFS model has been bashed many times in the past years. GFS Global Forecasting System. And the GFS model got bashed many times because it's not the greatest model. However, it nailed the blizzard bus last year where the European failed, though it nailed Sandy, so you know, it kind of weighs in those areas. Your polar vortex is right here, and your strongest point of your Rossby wave is right over here. So basically, all this blue, these lowered height potentials drop to the east coast, which is very important if you want your cold and snow, where previously it was locked up over here. Ah, here, my, one of my favorites right here, Southern Oscillation Index. So basically by looking at this chart, when you have your chart um, paths dropping, that's where your El Nino really strengthens. But if you look at this, look at this arrow, rapidly rising. That means that this El Nino is going to rapidly rise so quick and collapse so fast that a lot of people that made winter forecasts based off of its super El Nino are going to crash and burn. People are like, why are we getting so much snow? Where are these storms coming from? You called for a warm winter. It's not going to happen if that's happening. And when I went to AccuWeather, um, Henry Marcusudi and Bernie Reno, he posted this and I just analyzed it and he was explaining that El Nino is weakened in November based on the SOI values but has dipped again in the last seven days. Transition time in January, which mine's January 7th, means winter attacks the east and snow lovers will rejoice. I 
posted this a couple times. I was talking to people, but I want to get over to our gym. Hopefully, you guys will be able to see. But let me show you this real quick. This is from a GM Assemble. This is the Canadian model, but it's different panels of the Canadian model. And over here, you got your polar vortex and your Rossi wave up in Siberia. Now, if we go back to what wonderful Dr. Claire Condi was saying about our albedo effect, when the solar radiation comes out and hits the snow, it gets bounced back up into outer space. The atmosphere absorbs this and it works its way up into the stratosphere the upper levels. Once it gets to that point, watch what happens. Okay. Boom. Breaks the outer polar vortex wall and displaces the height anomaly south and east. This right here is absolutely screaming a brutal winter. Now, one of my personal favorites I want to get to real quick. About two months ago, I got a lot of backlash from some people in the Buffalo Great Lakes region saying, you know, we're going to get a lot of snow this year. I basically said you guys are going to get screwed over. For the first time in 116 years, Buffalo, New York has had no measurable snow yet this season, and it's very December. Zero. Compared to last year's 80-inch lake effect event dumping in November. Because we go back to our lake effect snow, the contrast between our temperatures that go over the lakes and how warm the lakes are affect our lake effect snow. So let's say, for example, our lake effect is, our lake is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit and we have an Arctic air mass of 15 degrees. That's like over 40 degree difference, that's huge. You're gonna get a huge contrast and dumping snow and crazy. Now, if the lakes are say around 38 and the air mass coming over is 30, only eight degree difference. Eventually, as it gets closer to that 38 and the air temperature in the lakes are at the same temperature, your lake effect is done. No more lake effects snow this year and they're closing out very quickly. So a lot of people that backlash me on that in this region, they got so bitter and it was so funny. Me and my colleagues were kind of like attacking them back. Well, they cricket on that part. Um, another thing I was also mentioning as well, the West Coast has been getting pounded with, I would, I think I'm comfortable to say some deadly storms in the Pacific Northwest. I think over 30 people were killed. And keep in mind, even though that I did go to AccuWeather and I did, you know, love the station, they made a forecast in the fall that this region was going to basically have wildfires. Now they're getting battered with 100 mile power winds and like, three to six feet of snow in the mountains and like a foot of rain, it, it's absolutely crazy. But you know, no one's perfect and we all have to acknowledge that and we've all learned from it. Um, I made a potential winter hotspot map. This is about, uh, let's say December 6th. We are in this purple over here. What does this mean? Your departure from average for snow, so let's say if our average, you know, is 30 inches a year and I see the potential of 45 or 60, I'll take it from that departure. I think this whole area is gonna get slammed. Even all the way down into North Carolina, I would say, you know, North and East of Atlanta, these mountain regions, and then just the Interstate 95 area is just gonna. When is this supposed to happen? Um, first possibility, once our pattern fully flips, will be around January 7th. We're still gonna go through our transition stage, but that is when all the stratospheric warming will bump into the polar vortex. One more thing I want to show you guys. Hold on. Ignore that picture. I like to, you know, get casual sometimes. Hopefully, it, <laughs> hopefully it will show it because I tried to do this before. Where? Oh, here we go. If not, I can actually always just go to the NOAA website if it doesn't show the time lapse. But this is the most important thing to back up my claim. I also made a video on this as well. Uh, let's see if it actually. Oh, wonderful. Please, the time lapse. Okay, we're done. That's kind of annoying. All right, please do it. Here we go. Beautiful. Watch this right here. A Rossi wave is going to form right here. Look. Look how it's just building up right over here. This is going to basically break the Arctic Circle's leg that this eventually pushes up. Another one also forms right over here. And this is also the amplification of you know our, us getting our 60 degree weather and with our actual southeast ridge forming. So this is kind of actually amplifying our upcoming warm spell. So originally the models were saying, oh, it was going to be 45, 50, and then all of a sudden the 60 degree temperatures came because our Rossi wave is going to amplify the southeast ridge, but eventually all this is going to go into the stratosphere like this has already, and it's going to push right into the North Pole. And you can see that there's, you know, some of that lowering height, the blue, are starting to drop down into the U.S. Once this shifts to the East Coast, and this all this red makes it up in here, your winter will start. That's pretty much all I have to say.